Hello all, welcome to part 5 of the buffer overflow primer video series. In this video, we will look at how to refine our shell code further in order to make it useful enough to exploit a buffer overflow condition. So in the previous video, we wrote a script called exec.s in which we went ahead and called the exec v syscall and spawned a shell, right? And this is the code for that. So let's try and understand what is the problem with using this shell code as is. So let's quit the program and have a look at the shell code in object dump. So if you notice, this is the shell code which we need to go ahead and plug into our buffer to exploit it. However, the problem really is that we have nulls or zeros in this shell code. And as all of us know that it is not possible to push this in as is into a character buffer array simply because in strings null would mean end of string because of which if we push this in as input uh, to any program which might let's say be expecting a string then the rest of the input after the null will not be accepted. Hence we have to modify the shell code in order to remove all these nulls in some way. The second problem is that of hard coded addresses. Let's actually load up the executable in GDB and disassemble the main program, uh, the start routine. So if you notice all these addresses, uh, you know, EBX, uh, the slash bin slash bash location, right? All of these are currently hard coded. Now the problem with this is that this will not really work when we actually push this onto the stack across all computers and various different uh, versions. So we need to set up relative addressing and not use any hard coded addresses in our shell code. So these are the main two problems. Uh, one is, you know, we cannot have nulls in the shell code and the solution to that is to replace all the null statements with statements which do not have nulls in them. And then is that we cannot use hard coded addresses. Instead, we will have to set up relative addressing. So how do we go ahead and do that? Let's go back now and open up the script which we've written. So what I have done is that I have modified the previous shell code in order to accommodate both of those requests, which is no nulls in the shell code and all addressing should be relative addressing. Now let's see how we have modified it. Now what we need to do in order to set up relative addressing is go ahead and fix some point which we can use with respect to which we can go ahead and manipulate all the other addresses and locations. Now in order to do that, we go ahead and want to push some dependable address onto the stack which we can use. So what we do is as soon as the start routine comes, we issue a jump to a label called my call statement. And this is actually going to be a short jump. And my call statement, the thing it does is goes ahead and calls another label shell code, which is nothing but the next statement after the jump my call statement. And after the call to shell code, we basically have a variable defined, ask a variable defined, which is slash bin slash bash a four B's and four C's. We'll come into exactly what this is and how we will use it a bit later. So what happens? Well, as soon as the jump statement is hit, we go ahead and to this point and the call shell code statement gets executed. Now, if you remember from the assembly primer, as soon as the call statement is issued, the next address which needs to be executed is actually stored onto the stack. So what happens is the address of shell variables, which is the beginning of this string is actually stored onto the stack as the return address, right? 
then our code transfers to shell code now currently the stack uh, the top of the stack has the return address which is the pointer to bin slash bash and the a b's and c's the first statement we execute is a pop statement into esi what this does is it retrieves the top of the stack which is the return address which we just pushed in and puts it into esi so now esi points to this string right the next statement which we actually issue is a zor statement between eax and eax and as we all know a zor of any quantity with itself is nothing but zero which means right now eax also has zero so basically esi is pointing to this string and eax is zero let's now go back to our slides so currently esi points to the beginning of the string slash bin slash bash a b four b's and then four c's right and then nine esi is nothing but pointing to the a character and 10 esi or a esi is pointing to the beginning of the b character and e esi is nothing but pointing to the c beginning of the c character array right so what is the idea if you remember exec ve let's go back to the man page it expects three inputs a pointer to the file name a pointer to the argv array and a pointer to the environment array right so what we want to do here is in this entire memory location set up all these three inputs right so the first thing we need to do is go ahead and null terminate the name of the program right now slash bin slash bash does not have a null termination so a needs to be replaced by a zero to null terminate the string bin slash bash let's go back to our code and that is exactly what we are doing in this statement move byte from al which is nothing but zero into nine esi which is where currently a is so what happens is bin slash bash remains as is however the a is replaced by a zero which is nothing but a null right the next statement is move the current value inside esi into a esi right so a esi is this location and the current value of esi is nothing but a pointer to this memory location where the bin slash bash string is starting so let's say mnop is the address of what esi is currently pointing to that is what is currently stored in the four b's right so the four b's the placeholder is replaced by mnop now finally we go ahead and move the value of eax which is once again zero into e esi which is nothing but the four c's we have in the end right so there are all zeros here so exactly what do we have uh, in memory right now well slash bin slash bash terminated with a null is nothing but the file name now mnop together is nothing but the address which is pointing to the file name right so this is a pointer to the file name itself that is what is stored in these four bytes here and then finally we have another four bytes which is nothing but a null now if you think from a file name standpoint we have the entire file name if you think from the next input we require which is uh, an array of strings pointing to the argument then first of all this is the pointer to the array which is argv and the first four bytes are nothing but pointing to the file name which would be argv0 and the next four bytes are pointing to argv1 which is null right so argv is also completed the final input required is a pointer to the environment uh, string array and once again if we go ahead and point this uh, to e esi which should be this entire c then that is also a null so what we are doing is exactly the same thing which we did in the last video just that we want to make sure that a priori we are not inserting the nulls into this entire array so we have written some sort of a self modifying code uh, which is making sure that this initial array with these placeholders a b's and c's 
are now modified to go ahead and accommodate the inputs to exec VE exactly. So if we go back to our code, the next thing we do is go ahead and load the value 11 into AL. Now 11 is nothing but the syscall number for exec VE. And the reason we are not loading into percentage EAX is simply because the rest of the three bytes of EAX will actually be zero. And that will affect our shell code and put zeros in the shell code. Because of this, we've made sure that we've instead used a move byte into AL and hence this shell code will not be zero. Now, if you remember, what do we require for exec VE when we are making a syscall? Inside EAX, we require the syscall number, which is 11, and that is what we have put right now. Inside EBX, we require the first argument to exec VE, which is a pointer to the file name, and that is what ESI is. And if you notice right now, we are moving that value into the EBX register as ESI is nothing but pointing to the file name, right? The next statement is actually going to go ahead and load a pointer to argv into the ECX register, right? So if you notice right now, EBX is pointing to the beginning of the file name. Now ECX is going to point to the beginning of the array of pointers, the first of which points to the file name and the other points to null. And then this statement load effective address EESI into EDX is nothing but going to point to the environment pointer array, right? Which is nothing but a null right now. And then we go ahead and issue the interrupt for the syscall to execute, right? So let's run through the code again. Basically what we wanted is relative addressing to be set up. That is why we first go ahead, issue the jump statement and then a call so that the address of where this string is stored is placed onto the stack. And so that we can use this address in our code and go ahead and do the other calculations. So once this address is on the stack, we want some way to be used, able to use this. That is why we pop it into the ESI register and now use the ESI register as the reference point for all other operations. Then we go ahead, ZOR Z, uh, EX with itself to go ahead and put zero inside it. And then we manipulate this string and change all these placeholders, the A's, the four B's and the four C's to actually contain the null required to terminate the file name, uh, the address of the file name itself, and then finally the null, which is going to be the second argument for argv, as well as the uh, first argument for the environment pointer array. Once we do this, we load the appropriate registers, ax, bx, and cx, and dx, uh, with the arguments required for exec v to execute and then issue the interrupt. So, well, once we do this, uh, let's go ahead and assemble this. Let's link it. Now, if we actually go ahead and use object dump and look at our shell code it starts from here, what we will notice is that there are no nulls in this shell code. Notice there are no zeros in this entire shell code. Right? So now we go ahead and use this shell code in a C program to check if it is working fine. So what I've done is I've taken the shell code from here EB18 and then gone all the way to the final 43, right? And inserted this into the familiar C program which we used in the last couple of videos. Now let me go ahead, compile this program
and let's execute it. So if you notice the shell code is working and we have got our bash prompt. So well, that's all for this video. The point which I wanted to make is how you can go ahead, use a base shell code and remove the nulls and set up relative addressing and create a much more compact and usable shell code. So in the next video, we will look at how we will be able to inject this shell code into a into the memory of a running process and make it executed. Uh, hopefully you liked this video, would request you to please leave your comments behind and thank you all for the encouraging comments which you've already left behind. I really appreciate it and that is what is helping me create more and more videos. Thank you.